Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, so for today's video, I'm gonna film a makeup video because I'm not getting ready for anything. Like I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> well, I'm actually getting my nails done today, which I'm super excited about because I haven't had them done in a long time and they look like shit. So I am getting my nails done today, but I'm just getting ready just because, because I stopped filming YouTube videos as frequently. Like that's when I used to get ready and like do my makeup and like get all cute. And ever since I've stopped filming as frequently, I've just kind of felt like a slob because I'm just in gym clothes and like scrub clothes all the time because I work from home. So as like a little bit of a self care ritual, I've just been getting ready randomly, like whenever I have time and taking pictures for Instagram, which may sound silly, but to me, like I love doing it. It's just fun. Like I like getting ready with like no pressure of going anywhere, but just like, because getting ready is the fun part of going out, no? I mean, for me it is. So that's what I'm doing today. Um, I don't know if I'll actually be able to take pictures because it's raining outside right now, actually, surprisingly. Um, so I don't know if I'll take pictures outside or like if I'll even take them, but that was my intention of getting ready today. But regardless, I'm gonna get ready anyways. Um, and then I also am gonna talk shit a little bit. Like I'm gonna rant today. <laughs> Um, my favorite kind of videos are ones where I just am like talking off the top of my head and just kind of like fucking around and like talking shit basically. So that's what I'm going to do today. I decided I wanted to film a video of doing my makeup and also talking about my pet peeves. I have a lot of pet peeves and my number one pet peeve is when people know what a video is about from reading the title and then hearing me talk about it and still leave a comment saying that I'm negative. So if you get triggered by people ranting, just click off the video right now because my number one pet peeve is when people leave unnecessary comments. Um, don't be that person. It's so easy to just click out of the video. Um, like I'm not even being negative. It's not even like I'm gonna rant in like a negative way. I just like to rant, it's just fun, okay? Let me have my fun. Jesus fucking Christ. I know I'll still get like one comment, but I wanted to preface the video with the fact that my pet peeve is when people do that. So hopefully I can mitigate any annoying sensitive bitches because I don't like sensitive bitches. <laughs> so anyways, I'm just gonna, like it's not gonna be, ooh, I'm gonna turn up. So anyways, it's not gonna be like a super descriptive makeup tutorial in terms of like me explaining what I'm doing, um, it's gonna be more like me talking and then doing my makeup at the same time. So if you want a video that um, is more descriptive, I've done like other makeup videos in the past where I explain better about what I'm doing, um, but today's not gonna be one of those days. So it'll just, I think I'll put the products in the description regardless, but I'm not gonna like explain it as I'm doing it. So yes. My first pet peeve, I have a list on my phone that I've actually been creating for a while um, because I wanted to film this video for a while. So a lot of these pet peeves are old, but they still apply because it still irritates me. <laughs> so my first pet peeve is people who repeat themselves. Like in terms of telling me a story multiple times or like t repeating themselves in things that they tell me. Um, like my ex-boyfriend used to do this all the time. It's like, bro, I've heard this story and I've gotten better at just saying that. Like I used to just sit politely and like let the person repeat their story because I didn't want to be like, you've already told me that, you know, because I feel like an asshole, but it's so irritating. The irritating part to me is not the fact that I have to listen to you and like, okay, actually the annoying part to me, there's a couple parts. First off, before I would tell people like I've already heard this, it's so hard for me to pretend like I'm interested a second time, you know? So it's like the fact that you're making me put in effort to pretend like I find this story interesting when I've already heard it five times, I, I don't have the energy and the fact that you're making me do that is annoying. <laughs> also, I have earplugs in, um, so if you see them, it's because I get distracted when I and filming and I hear noises. So I always put earplugs in while I've been putting earplugs in. Yeah, so it's not it's not just the fact that I have to pretend like I'm interested a second or third or fourth or fifth or sixth time. It's the fact that, well, it's that. And then it's also like 
clearly there's no reason why you're telling me this aside from just to hear yourself talk you know like if you tell me the same story six times it's not because you want to hear my input on your story or like you want to get closer to me there's like no method behind telling it's it's just so you can hear yourself tell the story in my opinion because for me like when I open up to someone or like tell them a story it's usually more calculated like I'm like okay I trust this person I feel like they'll relate to this story um like whatever it may be I feel like I never forget when I tell people something um, and so it's always annoying to me. It's like, well, why are you even telling me this? Because clearly nothing I said the first time was memorable enough for you to remember that you already fucking told me this. Um, so like, why am I even listening? Because to me, it's like, you literally just want to hear yourself speak. And to me, that's just annoying. So that's like my first pet peeve, mostly because it's also from people who... Like, it's also one thing if it's more of a reciprocal relationship, but usually people like that, it's like I'm always listening to them talk about themselves, which is fine. Like, I don't mind that, but it's more so just the fact that you've told me this story 10 times just kind of speaks volumes about how much you talk about yourself. You know, like, oh, I put on too much, um, <laughs> I might have put on too much concealer. Um... Yeah, so like to me, it's just like you literally must talk about yourself so much to where you don't even remember who you tell stories to. And to me, that's just irritating. I just get annoyed. Um, so yeah, a lot of these pet peeves, by the way, are not like they're not the end of the world. It's not like I'm going to hate someone for doing this. It's more just like Jesus Christ. But yeah, now I'm getting a lot better at just being like, yeah, you've already told me this. I used to just feel like I was being rude. Like I was like cutting them off or something. But now I'm like, no, because you're wasting both my time and yours. Like you're wasting your breath because I've already heard this. And I'm wasting my energy by pretending that I haven't heard this before. So I'm just going to save us both <laughs> our energy and just cut you off and tell you like, hey, I've heard this <laughs> before. Um, so yeah, that's my first pet peeve. Well, I'm not doing these in order, by the way. Like, it's not like one is more irritating than the other. They're all irritating. Also, what really bugs me is when I have random, just like large pimples. Because usually my skin is pretty clear, but then I'll always just have one. Like, I had this big one on my forehead the other day. I was like, that's cute. <laughs> okay, this is kind of a random one. Like, some of these are more, like, super irritating, and then some of them are more just like random and just like more things I, I don't know. You'll get what I mean. But I, it always bugs me in movies <laughs> when things are just super unrealistic. Like, in movies, why are people always hanging up the phone without saying bye? When does that ever happen? When are you just like, okay, the conversation is done. I'm going to hang up on this person. You know what I mean? Like, once you pay attention, because I think I had a friend who mentioned this to me. I think, or maybe I saw it on Twitter. I don't remember. Um... Once you start noticing like that this happens, you won't be able to unnotice it. Like now whenever there's a phone call in a movie, I'm like waiting, like, are they gonna say bye or are they just gonna awkwardly hang up? And it's the same thing with um, with uh, the breakfast in the morning where the <laughs> it's just more so unrelatable. Like the parents go out of their way to make this nice breakfast for their daughter or their son who's in high school. Which, that never fucking happens. Be real. Your parents are tired as fuck. They're not making you breakfast in the morning. Well, maybe some parents do. I would always have toaster strudel in the morning because my parents were not going to make me breakfast. <laughs> um, so not only is that part unrealistic, which I could live with, whatever. We want to make it like a happy family vibe. I get it. But then the kid always is running out the door and just grabs a piece of toast and orange juice. Like, your mom literally made you chocolate chip pancakes. And you're going to run out the door with some toast? Not only is that unrealistic, because who can say no to chocolate chip pancakes, but it's also rude. <laughs> and I feel bad for your mom. And I would gladly switch families. <laughs> Just kidding. My mom is watching this. I didn't mean that, mom. <laughs> but yeah, it's more so just unrealistic. Like, bro, take time to eat. Your mom prepared a nice fucking breakfast for you. You rude bitch. <laughs> 
So yeah, it's one of those things where now I've probably ruined movies for you guys because now, watch, you're not gonna be able to unnotice it if you haven't noticed it in the past. The second I started noticing it, now I'm just like, it grinds my gears. Like every single time, I'm just like, it's unrealistic. Um, but yeah, like I said, they're silly pet peeves. It's not like I'm watching a movie pissed off and like writing the director like, why, why did you do that? It's more so just things that just vaguely get under my skin. Um, so yeah, that's another pet peeve of mine. Okay. <laughs> My next one, bro, this makes me so mad. <laughs> like, I don't know why. It's one of those things where it's like, I need to get a grip. Like, some of these I realize I'm the, I'm the toxic one here because some of these I'm like, there's no reason to get upset over this, but I'm just like, why are you doing that? You know what I mean? And so it's not like I'm ever gonna act out on it. Like, I'm never gonna be like the person who like doesn't understand that they're being a little bit over dramatic. Like, I get it, I'm being very, picky and like toxic by finding these things irritating, but I, I can't help it, I do. <laughs> um, bro, when people sit on the toilet forever, <laughs> it makes me so mad. Like, what are you doing? Especially it's one thing, okay, so like my dad used to do that and maybe that's why it bothers me because I'd be like, I have to go pee. Like we had two bathrooms, but one was in my parents' room and he would use the one in like the normal one. He's like, bro, if you're gonna take hours, go to your bathroom. I have to go pee or like I have to get ready for school or like whatever it may be. So I think that might be like kind of why it bothers me. Maybe just like triggering from childhood. But I noticed it like, okay, so it actually first started bothering me when I was uh, a restaurant worker, like, like a hostess. And part of our job description was we had to clean bathrooms and toilets and stuff. Well, not actually like clean the toilets, but just make sure that the bathroom was presentable. And it'd be like the end of my shift and I'm trying to get home, you know, I've been at work, tired, I just wanna go home, eat, go to sleep. Especially because usually at restaurants, when you get off work, it's like 11, 11.30, uh, if you're not a closer. So it'd be late. And I'd be like waiting because I have to go into each stall to like change the toilet paper and like the um, like the little toilet seat covers and just like make sure everything looks good in there. And I'm also part of it too is like I would get very nervous like I had to do everything right, you know? It's probably not a big deal if I would have just not checked one toilet, but I don't know. I just hate doing that. Like I just want to finish my job and like do it properly. So I'd be waiting in the bathroom for like 10 minutes for people to get out. I'm like, don't you have friends you need to go meet for, for dinner? Like, are your friends not worried about you? It's been 20 minutes and you're just chilling in the bathroom. Like, why? <laughs> what are you doing? It's one thing if you're like taking selfies or something, but they're just like on the toilet. Silent, like not even making noise. It's like, so what is happening in there? <laughs> I just don't get it. And then I'll notice it too at um, the gym because like, obviously there's bathrooms at the gym and more often than not, like the gym I go to, there's not many stalls for like how many people there are. So more often than not, it's like you're waiting, which is fine. It's like, it's not, the issue is not waiting. It's more so just like, why are you taking 20 minutes? What is happening? Do you need help? Do you, are you constipated? I can help you with that. <laughs> Let me give you some tips, girl. <laughs> I, I can help your digestion, okay? As long as you take a little bit quicker on the toilet because you're killing my vibe just sitting there when I had to go pee. But yeah, once again, I know that's silly. It's like everyone is welcome to go to the bathroom. It doesn't matter how long you take. I know, I get it. But that doesn't mean that the deep down, I do get a little bit frustrated. Deep down, I do get a little bit peeved. <laughs> um, ooh, I put on too much blush, I think. Oh, maybe not. Um, so yeah, that's, that's always bugged me. <laughs> I don't know why. 
please let me know if I'm fucking insane or if any of these irritate you too. Like I would love to know you guys' pet peeves and like what grinds your gears. Um, please let me know. Please tell me I'm not crazy. <laughs> okay, I almost forgot, but one of my favorite things to do before I start my makeup, which I already started, so I kind of am late on this, but I take like a lip tint because I've really been liking just a softer, less harsh lip. Like I used to do a lot of lipstick, um, but I've really like kind of toned down my makeup in the past couple months, like past year maybe. And so I love to just put on a lip tint while I do my makeup and then we'll just let it sit there so that my lips can kind of pick up the color and then when I go to like put lipstick on them and everything uh it just it's just easier because my lips look a lot darker um than they were before so Okay, next one, pick me's, pick me girls, girls that like their entire lives are getting, trying to get men to accept them and by trying to get men to accept them, they hate on other women. It is so, it pisses me off so much, <laughs> like, which a pick me is a girl that seeks validation from men and the way that she gets that validation is by hating on other women. So like a couple examples that I've noticed recently are um, when girls, so OnlyFans has become like a big, oh, okay, also another tip. I take this got to be styling spiking glue, it's for your hair. I put it on a spoolie, which is like super crusty because of all the, but it still works. Like it can be crusty and as long as you can brush your brow hairs. Um, and then I actually shape my brows and like brush them up before I put anything in them. Um, and it helps me get like the proper shape because my brow hairs are kind of long. So it helps me to like see where they're gonna lay first before I actually, um, put anything in them. Oh my God, I had so much caffeine this morning. My heart is racing so fast. Never again. I was really tired because of the time change. So I was like, oh, I'll have four shots of coffee. No, I'm like jittery as fuck. Um, but anyways, pick me. So one that I noticed recently is like, cause OnlyFans has become a big thing recently, which OnlyFans doesn't have to be for you. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I've thought about making one. Why the fuck not, right? I just feel like, I don't know, I just, I don't know why I don't, I just can't. So that's what I mean, it's like, it doesn't have to be for you for you to not have to hate on it, right? Like, I see girls all the time hating on other women for having OnlyFans and like, not. it's like not a real job. It's like, bro, anything that makes you money and pays your bills is a fucking job. Stop being the job police, okay? Like, mind your own fucking business. It makes me so mad. Like this is actually one of those ones where I get mad. Like most of these are kind of like joking. Like it's not as serious. No, this one pisses me off because dude, why does it matter? Like that's the thing for me is like, I want to know like, why are you upset that someone else is getting paid for showing their body? If you're religious and you're like pushing your religion on someone else, stop. Cause they probably don't believe in the same things as you do. So you can feel like it's something that you would never want to do or like it doesn't align with your personal beliefs, but that doesn't mean that you need to shit on other women for doing something that, that they either enjoy or pays their bills, especially in a pandemic where people are out of work. It's like, we're really going to hate on OnlyFans. If you're not hurting anyone, which OnlyFans doesn't hurt anyone, I would actually, I would actually argue it helps people more than anything. Um, because you know, women are, they have control over what they post, you know, they're getting paid for it. And then men clearly enjoy it because men, and it's flipped too. Like I'm sure there's some women who subscribe to like men's pages or whatever, but I would argue it's probably mostly men subscribing to women. And clearly the men like it, clearly the women like it. 
No one's giving each other STDs. It's just a fucking photo. No one's getting raped. Like, no one is getting hurt. So why are we upset? Why is this what we're focusing on? It's just so silly to me and just so, like, like you're the moral police. Grow up. If you're the type of woman who hates on other girls for having OnlyFans, just unsubscribe from my channel because I don't, I don't want you to watch me. I find you irritating. <laughs> like I said, you cannot, it cannot be for you. Like I've said, I, I've thought about doing it. I don't think I ever could. Um, I just don't feel comfortable like showing my body that much, which could be internalized misogyny. I don't know, but I would never ever in a million years judge someone else for doing it. In fact, I'm, I love when women do it because I think it's awesome that they're like taking control of, of their sexuality and like getting compensated for it instead of men just sexualizing them just to sexualize them. You know what I mean? So that's my two cents on that. Um, and then like another, so like back to the pick me thing, which is like my initial pet peeve. Like for example, Boozy recently made headlines for, um, saying that Lori Harvey like wasn't goals or something like that and like being like well what if that was your own daughter or whatever and once again like everyone can have their own opinions but this is coming from a man who has like six baby mamas and he's hating on Lori Harvey okay so that's a that's an issue all in itself if you don't know who Lori Harvey is she is Steve Harvey's daughter and she recently it broke my heart a bit, I'm not gonna lie, but she were Michael Jordan and her dating. And I always thought Michael B. Jordan was gonna be my baby daddy. And <laughs> I guess he chose Lori. We went on a couple dates, you know, it was fun. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, it was a little heartbreaking, but I'm happy for her. <laughs> so happy for her. Um, so yeah, basically, if you don't know who Lori Harvey is, she's Steve Harvey's daughter. And recently, um, Michael B. Jordan came out and like made their relationship Instagram official. Well, I guess they both did. And she was previously dating Future. Like she's kind of dated a lot of guys in the um, music industry or I guess just like Hollywood in general. And so of course she's being labeled a hoe. Whereas like, I mean, how many guys had, like so boozy, you're not a hoe when you have six baby mamas. Anyways, so there was just a lot of women that I saw agreeing with him. Why? Why? As if women don't have it hard enough, you know, getting judged by men and like, like, oh, she's not wife material. Like, at, and you know what pisses me off too is like they literally act like being wifed up by them. Okay, I'm like ranting about men at this point, but my whole point was that there was women who were agreeing with him. Like, what are you getting out of agreeing with him? Like, you don't think she's goals? Why? Why can't you just mind your business? Why do you have to hate on someone else? Because she's dating men and she's having a good time. She's an adult making her own decisions. Like, you're literally so weird for hating on that. Um, but basically, if we're going to continue this rant, why do men act like? Because, like, they're like, oh, she's, she's not wife material. Like, okay, and, and since when is that, like, my end goal in life? Like if you are the person who's gonna be wifing me up and you have these archaic beliefs and you are per, like you're a misogynist pretty much, I don't wanna be wiped up by you. I actually don't even want anything to do with you. So I don't know why you assume that being wiped up is like our end goal in life or anyone's end goal in life. When also it's funny cause I don't think Lori Harvey would look at you for two seconds. Like she would never date you. So like why are you even saying that? But it's just so silly to me. It's like they act like, oh, like she has too much mileage to be like a wife. Meanwhile, they fucked girls raw at parties for years, have like a hundred plus body count and they have the audacity to hate on a woman who we don't even know if she's having sex with these guys. They could just be dating. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so silly. Um, so yeah, the fact that there's women out there who literally go out of their way to agree with men like that like, girl, I hope he picks you. I really hope he sees this. <laughs> like, they just want to make themselves seem like they are eligible. You know, like, oh, I'm not like Lori Harvey. I'm loyal. I've never, I'm a virgin. 
I've never slept with a guy before. I don't even kiss on the first date because I am such, such wifey material. I will cook for you, I will clean for you, I will do everything you want as long as you please just tell me that I'm wifey material, please, please. So annoying. Yeah, that pisses me off because women get enough hate and judgment from men that we really don't need it from women, you know? Um. Okay, so I just turned the camera off while I finished my brows. Um, but basically, if you've watched my other Get Ready With Me, as you've seen what I do, but I just take like a very thin brush and I just like carve out my brow so that it's more of like a sharp shape. But I turn off the camera because I have to get like really close to the mirror and you wouldn't be able to see it anyways. Um, so yes, I've done it in other videos, I think, if you want to go back and watch one of my other Get Ready With, with Me's. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to my eyes, um, which I typically haven't been doing anything with my eyes, but I figure because I'm doing a Get Ready With Me, like... I'll just do something simple because like I said, I've really been doing just simple makeup. Um, I might do like a more glam, get ready with me in the future, but I feel like there's no point right now because most people are still closed down. So it's like no one's going out or anything. So there's no inspo you're going to get from my glam look, you know. Um, Plus, honestly, it's been so long since I've done any type of, like, glam makeup. I'd probably fuck up. I think it's been over a year. <laughs> like, ever since before COVID. Um, so, anyways. I'm going to take a really light brown. Okay, this one is a little bit more maybe, like, geared towards the bodybuilding community or, like, fitness community. So, if you're not, like, in that realm on Instagram, I don't know how much you'll come across this. But it's something that's really been irritating me lately because it's like I understand that hard work is definitely something that's important in life. Like everyone needs to know how to work hard because uh, if you don't work hard, like you're not gonna. I, my one of my favorite quotes is like, if you don't sacrifice for what what you want, one of your what you want will become the sacrifice. So like, I'm totally a proponent of hard work, but I'm also a proponent of rest. I don't think it's feasible unless you're a psycho to work. 24 7 and enjoy life and I feel like in my my philosophy of life is that it should be enjoyed I'm not put on this earth just to be a workhorse um yeah I thought I'm gonna fix that later I have like white stuff right here but it's not coming off um but yeah I'm not put on this earth just to be a workhorse and in the fitness community bro it's so toxic it's like everyone's like not everyone, but I feel like it's a, a competition of like who can work the hardest. Like, especially when it comes to competitors, which I'm, I'm thinking about competing in the future. It's like everyone on the, their Instagram is just like, basically like, I work harder than you. I zero out my macros every day. I don't sleep. <laughs> it's like, bro, I didn't ask. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Um, it's like crazy. Like I see it all the time and it's really annoying too, because I feel like it sends the wrong message to newbie fitness people. Um, because unless you're, which a lot of these people are, a lot of these people are on steroids. And so their recovery is a lot, like they can recover a lot quicker than most people. So you don't, they don't, they might not need as much sleep because they are on the juice, but it sends the wrong message to newbie fitness people that it's okay to sleep five hours a night. It's like, no, if you're sleeping five hours a night, you are not going to be progressing for multiple reasons. Okay. Cause that's the whole point is like, they're like, I don't sleep. Like I work all the time. And when I sleep, it's just a short nap and I'm still in my mind and my dreams I'm working. <laughs> and if you're doing that, good luck making gains, my guy. Good luck. Because you literally need to sleep in order to progress. Like, not only for your training purposes, like, 
the best way to gain muscle or to ensure that you're gaining muscle is to progressively overload. So usually it's lifting heavier each time you go into the gym or trying to. Um, but if you're not sleeping enough, that's never gonna happen. So how are you gonna progressively overload? And then when you sleep is when your muscles repair themselves. So it's just so silly. Like it's just a weird competition of like who can make themselves seem more like badass and who can like make it seem like their lives is the most horrible. And especially because it's so funny to me, it's like literally every single bodybuilder chose to be a bodybuilder. Like it's not like anyone put a gun to your head and was like, you have to um, do this sport, you know? And a lot of people act like it's like something that was forced upon them. It's like, bro, you can quit at any time. Like if it's really taking that much out of you, you don't have to do it, you know? It's actually a privilege to be able to do it. Uh, but yeah, it's just like become a pet peeve of mine um, because I feel like it also appeals to like, I mean, in other countries, not America, but like they really do make more time to rest. And so I feel like it's just falling into the whole American idea of like, we live to work, we don't work to live, you know? Uh, and I just don't agree with that. I feel like that's why so many Americans are so depressed is like we spend so much time either commuting to work or working and not enough time doing what we actually love. And so when I see people promoting that lifestyle um, and acting like that's what you have to do to be successful, I just can't help but cringe because, I mean, likely you're just gonna burn yourself out or you're gonna look back at your life and be like, wow, I wish I would have spent more time experiencing life instead of working all the time and not sleeping. You know what I mean? So I feel like it's just more annoying to me, especially cause I'm on like the fitness Instagram and I see it all the time and it just like, I hate it. What else can I say besides I hate it? So anyways, that's what I'm gonna do for my eyes. Very simple. I use the same color on the top and the bottom. And then I just put some um, like light here and underneath my eye. Very, very simple. Um, I'm gonna curl my eyelashes. Okay, so now for some mascara. Okay, so I still have a few more. I'll see if I can get through all them. Um, next one. Okay, this is another silly one, but I can't stand, like I'm overall a, a clean person, but not like anally clean. So, I mean, it's not like I ha I'm like a military bitch where everything has to be in order. It's more so I just don't like huge messes, but one thing that I cannot stand when it comes to mess is a dirty microwave. Oh my God, it's so gross to me. Even though I know that, you know, it's not like you when you put your food in that microwave, like your food's not touching it. I still feel like it's so gross because it's like the food is just sitting there like getting zapped. Ugh. Like when I'm over at someone's house and they're like, did you want to warm up your food? And then I look in their microwave and it's like disgusting. I'm like, actually, like, I think I'll eat it cold. <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you though. Um, or even like at my, my apartment, if I ever spill anything in the microwave, I'm cleaning that bitch up right away. I will not start the microwave and again until it is clean. And Sarah is so bad at that. Like Sarah <laughs> just lets the microwave get dirty. And so I'm just constantly cleaning the microwave, like perpetually, all the time. It's like so, I can't, I can't. I don't know why. And it kind of was one of those things that like started later in life for me. Cause I feel like in college, my microwave was not perfectly clean. Like I don't remember obsessively trying to clean it, you know? So I feel like it's something that happened recently. Like maybe when I lived by myself, I feel like maybe I became more of a clean freak in that way, but I just think it's so disgusting. Like, please clean your microwave. There's no reason for like food from eight months to a month ago to be crushed on the sides. <laughs> There's no reason. It doesn't really make me mad. It's just more like, it more just like irks me in a way. Like it's just gross. If that makes sense. I don't know. It's not like it makes me mad or anything. I'm not crazy. <laughs> like I'm not like seething over in the corner. Like your microwave's dirty. Okay, so I'll probably put on a second coat after this, but um, 
I'm gonna put it on my lower lashes too. Yeah, like anything else, like if there's a little bit of dirt on it, it's whatever. But microwaves, I can't do it. Just can't. Same with a fridge too. Like dirty fridges actually gross me out as well. I feel like it's just like a food thing. Like if my food's in a like contaminated space, I just feel like it's less edible. Um, but yeah, that's just that's just my my food OCD. I'm like not OCD about anything besides food. How how accurate for my life. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna brush off my Bro, this pimple's pissing me off. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to cover it up more. Hold on, see what we can do about this fucker. Okay, one more that I can't stand is people who bring Instagram into real life. Um, which don't get me wrong, like I love taking pictures just as much as the next person. Um, like. I'm literally getting ready right now to go take pictures, hello. But I hate when I'm with people and it's all about Instagram for them. Like it's all about, you know, posting to their story or taking like 10,000 pictures. Like if we're spending hours taking pictures to me, it's just like kind of sad. Like why do you care so much about getting like the perfect photo? To the point where it's not fun anymore. Like, it's supposed to be fun, you know? But if, like, if we're out at dinner and it's, like, every two seconds, you're like, can you take a picture of me doing this or this or, like, in front of this? And it's like, can we actually talk and, like, hang out? Or is everything going to be about a fucking picture? Uh, or it's the same thing, like, uh, whenever people are, um, like, they'll be at, like, whatever kind of gathering with their friends and all, everyone's on their phone. So like per se, I'm the person filming, like everyone's on their phone, I'm like filming. And then everyone is like, oh, hi. Like, but they were all on their phone like two seconds before. But then as soon as the camera's on them, they're like acting like it's a great time. And it's not even like, I guess it's not even a pet peeve. It just more makes me feel super empty. Like, you know that empty feeling where you're just like, you feel super drained and sad. I can't even describe it. Um, that's how I feel when I'm either with people like that or when I see things like that because like Instagram is super fun. I love Instagram, like don't get me wrong. There's so many good things about it, but if it's taking over your life and you know, it's um, it's like your main focus when you're out with friends, I just feel like it's sad because once again, you're not really living life. You're living it for clout or like whatever whatever you feel like you're gonna get from posting. And there is totally a way to balance it because I've hung out with multiple influencers before and there are influencers who are able to be off their phones and like actually enjoy the moment. For sure, like it's not like everyone is like that but then there definitely are people who it's like you're with them, but they're really only with you because they want something to post, not because they actually want to hang out, you know? Um, and so there's definitely influencers like that that I've met too. And they'll usually use the excuse of like, oh, well, it's my job to be on my phone. You know, like it's my job to reply to comments. It's my job to do this. And like, yeah, it is, but I'm also here to hang out with you. You know what I mean? Like I'm not here to, to work. <laughs> like I'm not sitting here replying to comments while we're at dinner. So that's like another pet peeve of mine, especially being in LA. I feel like it's bothered me more because people down here care a lot more about social media than people in Seattle do naturally. This is like, I mean, I did choose to move here. I'm not even complaining about it. I'm just saying that um, I just noticed it a lot more down here. And then the more that I notice it, the more it kind of wears on me. Uh. Especially too, like, if I don't really know you, 
and you don't really go out of your way to talk to me until you're like, oh, let's take a picture together. To me, I'm just like, okay, I'll take a picture for you with your Instagram, but like you haven't ever tried to get to know me or like talk to me really. Like when I'm in a group of people and it's like, oh, let's take a picture. Let's take a picture together. And then we have to act all cutesy. And it's like, but I don't really know you. Like, and you haven't really tried to get to know me aside from when you wanted me to be in a picture with you, you know? So I just hate when Instagram makes its way into real life. Cause like, I understand that Instagram is fake. Like a lot of things on Instagram are fake and I can deal with that. But when it starts to make its way into real life and like the fakeness is kind of just hitting you in the face, then it starts to really wear on me. Okay, and my last one, um, I have more on my list, but I am almost done with my makeup, so I'm just gonna do one more. Uh, my last one is people who make a comment on how quiet I am. Not in like a, like, oh, you're so quiet. It's like, why are you so quiet? It's like, I don't fucking know. But you know what? Now I feel even less comfortable. So now I'm gonna clam up even more. Thank you for calling that out. Like, it's so weird. Like, why would you ever be like, why are you so quiet? I don't fucking know because this is how I am. Hello. And it used to bother me a lot more. Uh, I used to be like a lot less confident in myself. And so it used to bother me a lot more. And then I'd get like so awkward. I'd be like with a group of people and someone would say that. And I would literally just want to shrink into my shell and leave. Cause it's just like, I don't know. Now I just feel like you don't want me here cause I'm not contributing. I'm just like, I love to observe in social situations, not only because I'm quiet and a little bit shy, but also just cause I like observing. Like it's interesting to me. And like why I've never seen someone, like to me, it almost feels like a way to make you feel uncomfortable. I don't know, like I could just be being sensitive because it bothers me. Uh, so I feel like Maybe it's not malicious, but it almost kind of feels malicious. Like, cause I don't know if people are just dense, but I mean, if we think about this from a logical viewpoint, it's like, okay, logically I'm probably being quiet cause I feel shy. Hmm, that was too dark. Ugh, too dark, I don't want that color. Um, hold on. But yeah, I don't know if it's like, they're just not thinking it through, but logically, like if I'm being quiet, either it's a personality trait and that's just how I am, or I feel uncomfortable. So how is it gonna make the situation better for me for you to ask me why, as if I have an answer? Like, it's not like you're being nice, like, hey, do you feel okay, or like, hey, like pulling me aside, like, are you feeling uncomfortable or anything like that? It's just like in front of everyone, like, why are you so quiet? So yeah, it almost feels like malicious because there's like no benefit to saying that. Like it's not gonna make me perk up more. I'm not suddenly gonna be like snap and change my personality and be super loud, you know? And I feel like people should understand that. It's not like it's rocket science. Like, I don't know. I just feel like it's rude. So that's my other pet peeve. Cause like I've gotten that a lot. Um, or people just like commenting on my shyness in general. Like, bro, what is commenting gonna do? Now I feel more uncomfortable. Thank you. Okay, last step I'm gonna put on. This is my favorite lip balm ever. It's kind of expensive. Okay, it's kind of expensive. But, it, oh, that was upside down. <laughs> it's um, C.O. Bigelow, my favorite night balm. And I'll put it over my lipstick so it's like more of a gloss. But I also just put it on my lips. It's iconic. It is my favorite lip balm ever, like ever. It's amazing. I will never switch to another kind. Uh, I get off Amazon and it is kind of expensive, but it's so worth it. And it lasts a long time because you don't need much, so. Okay, so that is my makeup look.
very easy, very simple. Um, I am going to get dressed and I'll probably show you guys like my outfit because it's like a get ready with me, right? So I'll probably show you guys my outfit um, and like maybe how I do my hair and I'll just close out the video when I'm all ready. Okay, so this is my outfit that I decided to wear for my pictures. I just kept my hair natural because I wanted to wear a hat and um, like once I put the hat on it looked fine. It's usually like more crazy at the top so the hat kind of covers the craziness. Um, this top I think is from Karen Millen. It's like a nice knit. Um, I will double check to see if I can find everything online and if I can I'll put it in the description but if not I'll just put the brand name because some of the stuff I bought a while ago like this belt is from Princess Polly um, but it's like two years old and then these jeans are vintage as well I got them when I visited LA like two years ago at Reformation Vintage and then I put on some Converse because I'm a basic bitch and I pretty much only have Converse. <laughs> so, yes, that is my outfit. I will post um, pictures on the screen if I end up getting good ones like that I'm going to post. I'll post them like on the screen so you guys can see them. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go take some photos and hopefully I'll get a good one. Um, so... I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this little get ready with me. It was fun for me to film um, and I'm excited to go take pictures. So I hope you guys enjoyed my get ready with me, my ranting, and hopefully I'll see you guys soon for another video.